Hey everybody, AmpRepairGuy.com, 203-892-4119. So I have another AL811H here, it's a return customer. Uh, not with this amp, but he owned a, or owns actually also a AL811. He loved it so much, he purchased this AL811H. It's very little time on it. Uh, he wanted it as a second backup amp. This was made in 2023. So he used it for a little bit, and he said it had a tuning problem where the plate would skip when you go to adjust it the plate air variable capacitor wasn't turning all the time so set screws were nice and tight but there's a problem with the vernier drive so I'm going to swap that out is SO239 so always check these the input one has like no grip the output one has a little bit of grip so you always want to check your center pin on your PL259, when you go to solder it, sometimes you can leave a glob and it'll actually spread the clips. His are okay. So, next thing is, make sure you always plug it in straight, which he said he did. And he uses RG, oh, no, I'm sorry, um, LMR400 for the output. And, you know, it's very rigid, so I said always make sure you're going straight in, and make sure the barrel's nice and tight. And uh, for the input, he has RG8X. So, I'm guessing... I'm assuming it just was a connector issue when you first got the amplifier since it's the original owner and it has very little use. So I'm going to take the tube socket assembly out, ground the grids right to the metal. The reason why I do that is because with the current setup it goes through the screws for the ground connection. The order is nut, ring terminal, fiber washer, then socket. So a lot of times the fiber washer, well, well first off, a lot of times from the factory they're loose and then second the fiber washer uh, shrinks over time and then the nut becomes loose. You never want to have a bad connection between the grid and ground. You know, if the if, if you have one that has the gr uh, grids grounded, the most current ones have the grids grounded. So if that happens, you end up losing the tube and then you need new set tubes. So I go right to the metal and then I add the gas discharge tubes at the base of the socket. All four tube filaments are in parallel. So by doing one tube, one per side, you know, you're protected if any of the tubes have an issue. So this, this issue ha happens with the Chinese tubes. The older tubes, uh, like the RCAs, whatever, no, didn't really happen. But you end up with an anode to grid short or anode or can make it, uh, the short can make its way all the way to the, to the cathode. So if that happens, it back feed, would back feed over to the filament choke and then you know, through the board, the input circuit, damage the rotary switch, damage all sorts of stuff on the board and even, you know, take out the relay and possibly even take out your receiver and your transceiver. So, you know, I take the one off the board that they put on the board because if it happens, you know, you still damage a trace. So I put them right at the socket, take the one off the board. They, the earlier ones just had MOVs, you, you know, remove those and the two gas discharge tubes uh, protect it if there's an issue. So. I'll do all of that and I will tighten up on any hardware and solder, fix any solder joints. I'll add the longer screw to the base of the choke. So that's about it. I'll go over anything I missed when it's, when it's all done. So stay tuned. Please like, share, and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. And I have the 30. L1 behind me. I'm waiting on two mica caps for that. I only had two left, so it's killing me. Well, waiting on parts is just killing me. Another amp getting delivered today, and the coupler things coming for the for the uh, multi-band amp today. So I'll get back on that. And I ordered the can of paint for the front. And well, anyway, I'll go over that later on. So I'm very excited about that. Very very excited about that. And I did three. Uh, station service calls this week. I wish people were more, you know, camera friendly, but uh, can't force someone to want to go on camera. So that's where I've been. So anyway, and it's been beautiful out. It's been so nice out finally here in Connecticut. So, okay, I will see you guys soon. See something real quick. This is one of the filament connections. It's just touching up against it. It's not soldered. up against it it's not soldered and one of the grid to screw to ground connections Look at that. 
hard to get my finger on there. But you can see it is finger tight. This one is also so okay. So I'm gonna fix those issues and uh, get back to work. See you guys soon. Okay, so it's all set under here. So when I went to touch this again right here. It was too short. Oh, that's actually solder. Okay, so I went when I went to touch the original piece that went across that bridged these two filament connections to this conductor right here that puts them all in parallel, it snapped off. So it was just barely touching and they got a little bit of solder on it. And anyway, I removed it, put a piece across, went through the hole, bent it over, piece of solid copper, same gauge. Soldered really well, resoldered the piece right here. The gas discharge tubes, one side of each parallel filament for the four tubes. Right to ground. Gra uh, the grid connection goes right to ground. Remember, there's only one pin out of the four that's actually the grid connection. One pin does nothing, the other two are the filament. The two large ones are the filament. And, uh, you know, so it's really important to have a good connection at that grid connection, okay? So, good grid to ground connection because the grids are grounded in the amplifier. So, you see the other one here and here. I compressed the clips, so those are all set. I don't know what they had going on here. They had solder on here, so that is not proper connection for the grid. So, I don't know if they messed up at the factory or what. So, I'll get rid of that. This is all set. I'm going to reinstall the plate choke, put the longer screw in, longer screw, then the internal tooth crush washer, then the plastic spacer washer on the other side, and the plate choke. Okay, so I will restrip the filament wires and remove the gas discharge tube and MOV. I already changed the vernier. Okay, right, so I'll see you guys soon. Stay tuned. Okay, so it's all set. I'll go over everything I did. Change the SO239s. Tested it on all bands. Uh, fixed the solder connections at the line fuses. Fixed the solder connection right here. You never want an open on any amp, whether it's a uh, tube or solid state. So I'll fix that right there. Clean the input and output rotor switches with the oxid gold. Uh, there were a lot of loose nuts all over the place. The screws were loose for the plate tune capacitor before I took it out. Changed the vernier gear reduction drive, did everything below the sockets that you saw in the previous video. Removed the MOV, and the gas discharge tube, the rear board, you know, clean and uh, just lots of little things. So, it's my phone, uh, someone's texting another customer. So. I work on a lot of these. I work on a lot of amplifiers. I'm f very familiar with RF tube amplifiers. So this isn't a learning curve when I have one come in. I'm not, you know, just fixing it without knowledge of other things that need to be done. I, I touch on everything that needs to be done. There are a lot of kits out there that people sell, you know, for whatever reason that just aren't needed for all sorts of amplifiers. I just do what's needed. You know, if I wanted to make extra money, I could push certain kits, but, you know, I'm you know, not like that. I'm honest. So, you get what's needed, and that's it. And hopefully you'll never have another problem. You know, tubes, they need to be replaced at some point, but as long as you don't put the amp into an open and you don't abuse it, it should last a long, long time. I don't recommend using this amp on 17 meters uh, due to... People have, uh, you know, do issues with the plate choke. As you can see, this one isn't perfectly wound. So, you know, it's up to the customer if they want to listen or not. But, you know, it's just best to steer clear of that band. And, uh, yeah, I just want the customer to be happy. So, this guy's going to get this amp back. Like I said before, he has an 811 that I did. And another thing, the studs were loose. The screws were loose on the... Uh, top side of the board for the, they weren't like super loose, but I was able to uh, easily unscrew them. So I, what I do is I take a quarter inch wrench and I snug them all up underneath because the 
grid path is through the metal, through the standoffs, back to the plate tune cap. So you want a really good electrical connection. It's just all tight connections. You don't want anything loose. So it's already had the bias mod done. And uh, that's about it. So if you need an amp repaired, feel free to give me a call. I'm servicing the amps you see on my YouTube channel. Um, no longer messing with alphas. Uh, Richard Bird, he, he does all alphas. He's a nice guy. Does really good work. Just can't get parts. So Swamp of the Maritrons, Heath Kits, stuff like that. You know, TL922s. So... I stick with those amps, I can still get parts, and uh, I should be able to get parts for the, the Maritrons till the end of time, even if the Maritron get, ends up getting sold. So, I am 42, so I'll be doing this until I can. So, and uh, I'll say it again, I love tube amps, they'll be around forever, they're way more forgiving than solid state amps, even ones with protection circuits or whatever, and you know, just... I, I always prefer tube amps. You know, they're a little bit bigger, heavier, whatever, but in my mind, my opinion, just better. So, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for, for more videos. I'll, I'll be doing the 30L1 next. I have another amp showing up today. And like I said, the coupler thing will be here for my multi band amp. I have an offer on that from a guy in the Middle East. I'm mulling it over. And to be honest, I don't know if I'm going to get involved with making more. It's just so much time. It takes so much time. I don't think people realize how much time it takes to make something properly. And, you know, the parts. If I had to buy the parts, they would just be through the roof, you know. So, you know, prices have gone up on everything, and it's hard to get certain things. So, anyway, I'm rambling on. So, thanks for watching. Have a great day, and if you need something repaired, I'll say it again, amprepairguy.com is my website. Lots of cool pictures, lots of cool stuff on there uh, from things I've had over the years and some information on there. And um, my phone number is 203-892-4119. Thanks for watching. 73.